Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Liz the Lazy Cat and today I'm going to teach you how to draw two bananas. There will be timestamps in the description for those of you that want to skip ahead. If it's your first time on my channel, then I suggest you go to my How to Draw for Beginners Lesson 1 pair. I'll leave a link to it in the description. There will also be links to my social media, as well as my websites and other places where you can read my comics and see my art online. All you're going to need for this tutorial is a few pieces of paper. I've got two here to draw on and two to put my subject on. As always, it's best to have your own subject if you can get your own two bananas. A pencil, a sharpener if you're not using a mechanical pencil, and an eraser that doesn't smudge. I like to use a kneaded eraser. All of my supplies will be linked in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into our hand exercises. These are our warm-ups that I like to do every time before I draw. It's especially cold today, so I'm going to spend a little more time on rubbing my hands together. And now I'm going to squeeze them really, really hard and open them really, really far. Give it a stretch. Ah, crack your neck if you want to. Crack your knuckles if you want to. And I like to do a squat just to get the blood flowing a little bit. Get that blood flowing to the brain. Okay, and now we're going to start with our warm-ups. Um, so I guess a good warm-up for a banana will probably be some crescent shapes. But I always like to start with parallel lines. So I like to draw some vertical lines. Four of each and some sideways parallel lines. Woo, it's a wonky day today. And I try to space them as evenly as possible. Okay. And now we'll draw some crescent moons because that's kind of like what um, our bananas look like. So I just try to draw them as perfectly as possible. We'll do some skinny ones. So a crescent is basically you you draw the letter C and then you put a slightly taller C inside of it. So it's not smaller, it's just a little bit more straight up and down, less curved on the edges. And I'll go in the opposite direction. I could start with the small one this time and then put a bigger C on the outside if that's easier for you. And draw them a little bit bigger. And a little bit bigger than that. Real skinny this time. Yeah, there we go. Now a banana is not quite shaped like a, a perfect crescent. In fact, it's a little more curved on the top here than it is down here. It straightens out a little bit more. So we'll do some... Um, scythe shapes I guess you could say so they're a little more let's say if you see like a grim reaper scythe it's kind of like that but our scythe would be more curved and then straighten out like that a little bit more like that yeah <laughs> So we'll do some of these scythe shapes and then going in the other direction. And then we'll do, um, we'll, we'll put a little bulb and a stem on top and then it looks like a banana, don't it? Kind of, it kind of looks like a pepper now. <laughs> okay. That's pretty good for our warm-ups. 
So we'll move right on to sketching the banana. I'm gonna um, teach you how I map out multiple objects. That's sort of the purpose of this lesson. Um, so usually when people draw multiple objects, they get a little overwhelmed. Um, basically all you gotta do is make sure that you don't get distracted by the uh, by all the details like the freckles and the lines and the shading and all that. All you want to do is get the basic shape of both of them together. So I know that I kind of want this one to mostly be in the center. I guess the, f the best first step would be to decide what is the center of your overall drawing. So for me, the center is about right here. If this is the way I'm going to draw. Because that's if I was going to draw a line through the middle and cut the drawing in half, then it would be about as tall on this side as it is on this side. So... Um, I want to draw this one and I want to start with this shape kind of in the middle. So I want the top half of the inner banana to be in the middle of my drawing. So that's where I'll start. I'll just sketch, I'll just put a curved line. So that's the top of this banana. And then I'll continue with that curved line. And you want to look at your subject as much as possible. Okay, let me darken it up so you guys can actually see it on camera. <laughs> and then I'll put um, a second line a little ways away, leave room for filling out the detail over here. All right? And then kind of connect them with a little sideways V shape because that's, that's what the stems look like. Okay, so right now I'm kind of just doing a sketch warm up. You could call it a study of um, what my final drawing is going to be. And I'm just going to do my scribble warm up that I showed you in lesson one to kind of fill out the banana. And um, get a good grasp on my proportions. Move up my paper so that you can see both the subject and what I'm trying to draw. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm just, or you know, with something like this, you could probably just make a bunch of curved lines. That's easier for me. It's what whatever is easier for you. So right now, I'm just trying to f get my brain familiar with my subject matter. It tapers out a little bit at the end here. So don't worry about making it perfect. This is just another warm up. Okay. Now, it's a little bulgier on top. The tops meet. And... When you're when you're drawing two things that touch, two people kissing or whatever, you want to pay attention to the negative space. So that's this space here, this space in between, and all the space around the subject. Anywhere where you don't have your subject, that's negative space. Space that's not being filled up with a a drawing subject. So if I want to make sure these touch at the right place and and it looks right then what I really want to do is draw the shape the negative space creates so that creates this kind of lopsided diamond it's very long on one side very small on the other so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna draw this very long diamond shape with a tiny diamond shape on this end see and so that kind of creates the body of this banana so I can go to the other side and kind of make it symmetrical. And then I've 
got this negative space here, which is basically an extra hump on the most curved part of the inner banana. So I'll do that. I'll add the little hump. So that tells me that I need to bring this banana out a little bit more. So right now we're sketching. Okay, and then I'll taper the end out a little bit, make sort of a triangle shape, a blunted triangle though. Okay. And you fill it in if you want to. I like to fill it in because it just really imprints the shapes in my head so that when I go to draw it for real, this is already in my mind's eye. Okay, and so now you can really see this little negative space that I put over here. And you can see the shape of this negative space too. It's a little triangle. So you can check your negative space here. Okay, so that's pretty good for our warm ups. I think we're ready to go in and do the real thing. So go to your second piece of paper. And if at any point I'm going too fast for you, you can pause the video or back it up, whatever you gotta do. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me see. <laughs> had to really back up the camera today. Okay, let's do that. All right, I'm even gonna overlap this so that it can all fit in the shot. Okay, so like I said, you wanna start with the center of your drawing. So I'm gonna put a line here. And that, that's the inner edge of my banana. So I'm, let me see, I want this to show up on camera. So try to pay attention to your subject. Look at your subject so that your curve is accurate. This might even be a little more curved than that, okay. And now I'm gonna add the hump right now cause it's kind of, that's also part of the center of the drawing. I'm gonna add my little negative space hump. And I've got a lot of sketch lines now, so I'm just gonna erase the ones that uh, I don't need, the ones that are not serving me. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of draw the outside of the next banana. And this can be corrected later if I get it wrong. And it comes down to just a couple inches below the, well not a couple inches, but probably an inch below the negative space. And I'm just making the end round right now. I'll go in and, and make the shape proper later. Okay, so let's continue the inner curve of the inner banana and look at your subject as much as possible. I'm looking at my computer screen so that I see what you guys are seeing because if I was drawing from my angle, it would look really different. You guys are getting a very flat aerial shot. I'm kind of getting a 30 degree <laughs> top view. Uh, actually, it doesn't taper in very much, okay. Okay, so I'm just making it kind of an oval shape right now. I'll add some details later. I just wanna block everything in, get it. Okay, the banana is a little more curved than I gave it credit for, so I'm, I'm gonna bring the second banana out move the hump over a little bit. Make this inner banana a little more curved. Okay, and I'm building up my sketch lines again. I don't want them to distract or confuse me, so 
I'm going to erase them. Okay, so our negative space goes pretty far up, pretty far. So I'm just erasing the part that I sketched in, put a lot of sketch lines in there. Now I know this is going to be kind of challenging for some of you because we're kind of skipping around all over the drawing a lot, but it's really important to kind of get the center blocked out first. I know a lot of people kind of focus on the overall shape and getting the outline of the whole drawing done first, but that's not, that's not really how I work. Okay. So now I'm kind of tracing that negative space, taper the end of the banana. And now I'm going to focus on looking at my subject with the outer banana. Yeah, so the outer banana is very curved up here at the top. Okay. Now I'm going to um, kind of draw through the shape of the banana on top and pay attention to my negative space between the stems. I'm probably gonna end up making both. Well, uh, uh, this banana is pretty big already, so I'm gonna end up making the lower banana bigger. I don't think I made it big enough. Yeah, but uh, let's focus on the stems first. Okay. So let's do that negative space in between the bananas, the long diamond shape. And look at your subject as much as possible while you're doing this. Okay, and then after the stems meet, they have this torn part that's basically like a triangle. So I'll just draw that in like that. It doesn't come out quite that far, but okay. So let's draw the uh, other side to the inner hump on this banana. It's not much, not too much. Okay. And I don't, like I said, I want to make the inner banana bigger. So I'm just looking back and forth from my drawing to my subject. Or at least that's what you should be doing. <laughs> I'm drawing a, from my computer screen. I'm sure a lot of you guys are doing that too. So this comes out actually a little farther, I do believe. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so let's correct the uh, outer banana a little bit. I think we've got a little, a little more. Mm, is it the negative space that's bothering me? You know what? Let's put in the shadow because it can create an optical illusion and make it look like the negative space is too small or too big. Or it just doesn't look the same so we've got a shadow on the inner uh, um a cast shadow from the outer banana in the negative space so i'm gonna shade that in and then i've got a cast shadow from the inner banana in the negative space so i'm gonna shade that in as well and now that i've put that in the negative space looks pretty accurate to me. I think it might be slightly bigger than I gave it credit for. So I'm just gonna bring it out just a little bit and erase my sketch line. See how that looks.
Yeah, that looks better. Okay. So this banana, it looks a little bit too fat up top in my drawing. Um, and this line comes out a little too far here. It's very much like a straight line and then a curved line. Whereas I straightened out this part where it should be a little more curved. So let me just chip that out. And then, oh, I will erase that little sketch line. Okay. And I'm just going to bring the bulge in a tiny bit and then bring the rest of the banana, fatten the rest of the banana up a bit so that it doesn't quite look so tapered. Yeah, I like that better. So I will shave off my sketch lines that are too fat up top and then I will erase my sketch lines that are too skinny down the rest of the banana. A good eraser is your best friend, especially when you're a beginner. And I've been doing this for a long time, so my eraser is still my best friend. Erasers let you not worry about making mistakes while you're working, because you could just erase them later, you know? There. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, going back to our warm-up sheet just for a minute, I want to talk about the geometric shape of a banana. Um, my banana's got one, two, three, four, five sides. So, basically, if I was going to leave out the curve, if I was just going to um, look up the end of my banana, it would have a side on the bottom, two sides on the right and the left. and then two on top. So, sort of like a fat little house. And that's what the button on the end of the banana is shaped like, right? So, if I were to make a geometric shape based on that, let's turn the shape to the side and squish it a little bit. So I'll, I'll make the bottom slanted a little bit make one side straighter, one side farther away. Okay. And then I draw another one a little bit smaller up the to the diagonal, a little bit ways away from the rest. Okay, and then I would connect all the points with uh, some curved lines. So connect all your identical corners. And that's kind of the, sh the geometric shape of a banana. See, it's got these ridges here that mark where each side is. Oh, I forgot this one. Mm -hmm. But it's not quite like that. It's like we took this shape and then we, <laughs> we pinched the ends down, right? So if I were to put the pinched ends on it, like let's let's say this is the stem end that's more curved, I would continue these lines and curve them up a bit. And then I'd put like probably a little rectangular prism on top for the stem. And then I would taper the other end a little bit. And there we have a geometric banana. So that's just so that your brain can comprehend what we're about to draw. You don't have to have a super good understanding of geometry to do this because you you just draw what you see and you'll be fine, <laughs> even if you don't fully understand it. But understanding what you're about to draw usually 
makes it turn out a little bit better. So I'm just going to clean up my drawing so that all I have to work with are the outlines right now. And then we'll work on putting in our um, the more geometric parts of our banana. So this, the sides and then shading those. So the sides are not totally flat, right? You know what? Let, before we do that, let's um, let's taper the butt ends of our banana because I wanna, I really wanna get the details right. So just pinch your ends a little bit more. Just look at your subject, and see how it's shaped. I've got a little bit of a nipple shape on this end. Kind of grody this one. Got some little dark bits sticking off the end. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'm gonna erase more of my sketch lines. It's good to erase your sketch lines as they go because you don't want to, when you start zooming in on your drawing, you know, mentally with your eyes, you can end up focusing on the wrong line. You can go, oh, that's the line I want to have in the end. And then, no, you were focusing on a sketch line. And you're like, ah, I should have erased that so that I couldn't um, get distracted by it. Okay, so let's correct the shape of this banana. We've got a little bit of black. I'm I'm doing like a little oval basically and then I'm adding the texture that's coming off the outside. Right. All right, so now we can start adding our details. I don't want to do the freckles or the bruises or any of that yet. I just want to um, figure out where my shadows are and add form basically to my banana by adding in the, these inner sides seem to be the most defined. So we'll start with that. Let's go with our um, our inner banana, and I'm gonna kind of correct the uh, top shape a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So coming down from the stem, we've got this little section here, and you can just barely see it it connects to this little bruised bit that's why i like to do bananas that are like four or five days old because a lot of times the bruises will match up Ooh, yeah i want to kind of turn it over a little bit so that you can see but i don't want to move it too much i'll move the camera instead see on the underneath this perfectly this bruise lines up with the where the, our two sides meet geometrically and the same with this one. So bruised bananas are really great for beginner figure drawing and because they just give a lot more three-dimensional value to your drawing. It, the outlines are already there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put in this uh, inner side, outline that. bring it all the way and you're just following the curve that you already drew on the outline and then you bring it down to almost the middle of the end nipple here yeah okay and then 
there isn't another side to draw because this side is just very curved and it doesn't start until the the horizon of the subject disappears I guess you could say <laughs> from our line of sight so I'm just gonna go in and do the same thing on the outer banana put this inner side up here and it starts from about the middle of the stem and com comes out just a tiny bit see that shape okay and now we follow the curve of the banana and it tapers in just a little bit don't go all the way out to the middle it's really because see it's only like a third if I were to do another line in between this line and the outline that would kind of divide the banana into thirds so don't bring it too far out it kind of tapers in a little bit um, towards the butt of the banana so you can don't follow the line exactly bring it in just a little bit there we go now we're starting to see some shape mm, it doesn't come in quite that far I'll bring it out a little bit more towards the middle yeah there we go so I will erase that sketch line I got a couple sketch lines over here that I didn't erase. So I'll clean those up. And clean up any mistakes he made. Also, I like to clean up as I go because um, it just makes the drawing a more rewarding experience. Like it doesn't just look like a mess while I'm looking at it. So it keeps me motivated to finish it because it looks good even while I'm sketching it you know maybe I'm a little vain a lot of artists just like to sketch 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 and then not erase their lines until they're done but I don't recommend that for beginners okay um uh, so now let's see what shall we do next um let's put in our cast shadows so we have a cast shadow here on the inner banana we have one up by the stem um, we have one over here on the outer banana and under the stem of the outer banana as well so I think we should spend just a little bit more time on the stem <laughs> is it gonna fit? Yes. Come on. There. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so I've got this funny bumpy nub up here. It's kinda like a misshapen clover. It's got three little bumps coming out the top. And I'm just gonna shade that in right now because there's like a very dark part up top it's kind of like a triangle a very blunt misshapen triangle with a, a concave bottom and then we got this light area and then a dark area again so I'm just gonna draw the bottom of our funny little concave triangle here there yeah there's a the scene actually it comes up a little further <laughs> And I'm just going to shade that in. Yep. And there's like a line coming down the middle of the light part. Um, in between the stems where they kind of fuse together. And then there's like a, a neck right here where they get dark again. Now you can make it look a little more 3D if you add some curve. You can barely see any kind of curve to the tear mark here. Um, but I sometimes you exaggerate what you see a little bit just to make 
make it easier on the viewer so that they can see yes in fact this is a three-dimensional object so I'm just shading the dark part of the torn fused area and I'm gonna use some sideways lines so that I get a little bit of a gradient darken it up okay and then there's this line that comes down the middle of the outer banana stem it's kind of it starts near the top on this end and then it curves down and ends up um, meeting the seam line here there we go so you can see that the stem is kind of twisted. Okay, and I'm just gonna shade in this dark part right now because we're here already and it really lends to uh, the three-dimensional shape and the twisting of the stem. Also, the stem bumps out a little bit like that. So I'm going to erase some of my sketch lines. You guys can see it better. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the top of the banana is a bit bruised up just from the tension of the um, stem twisting back and forth. So you can bring that bruise out a little bit onto the curve of the banana and the curve is kind of like mm, let me see it makes this little wave shape right here bumps out and then comes in again you see that and then when we go down the seam the bruise really extends a bit so I'll just darken up with some more lines that are basically the same shape as the seam. Um, and then it stops kind of abruptly right there. And then we've got sort of a bat wing shape where it's dark around the bottom of the other side of the stem. And then all the way up this side, this inner side of the stem. And I'm lightening it up as I get towards the middle line here. And I'm gonna darken up my outline a bit. Just make that nice and clear. Now let's do the other stem. The other stem also has a, f a funny line that comes down the middle, but it doesn't line exactly up with our, um, our side seam here. It goes in a little bit further. So I'm just gonna bring the side seam up all the way and bring this line up and then it bumps out almost at the top maybe two-thirds of the way up the stem it's got a little bulge it comes out like that so I'm just gonna correct the outline of my stem where it bulges at the top because this this side of this stem is also twisting now I'm gonna erase um, my sketch lines in the negative space Nice and cleaned up. Okay, and I'm gonna darken up anything that I just messed up. And it's very dark on the other side of the banana, but it kind of just makes it look like a very dark outline. And you know what? My stem isn't quite fat enough. 
If you look at this triangle, or diamond shape, versus this diamond shape in the negative space, it's just not quite right. So really, I need to fatten up my stem a little bit. Maybe you drew it properly, <laughs> and you don't need to do this, but I'm going to. Yeah, I think that's better. Okay, so I'm going to erase my incorrect lines. See what I mean? You just correct as you go. And the eraser will be your best friend. Okay, so I'm going to darken up this little neck area and add some shading to the outside of the stem. It's very much in shadow on our inner side here. Okay, and then a little bit of that shading comes down the fruit of the banana. So I'll just use some diagonal and horizontal lines to express that. Shade that in a bit. Okay. Okay, I think it's time we if you think you're done with the stem, I've got to bring it down this side a little bit more. There's just something not quite right. I guess I bumped it out a little too far up here. Let me erase that, slim down that bumped area. It's not quite that bumped out. Yeah, that's better. Ta-da! Okay, <laughs> now that we've done the stem, we can move on to some more of the details. Okay, so I've got this beautiful bruising going on right here, and I want to make sure um, the line between my bananas is proper. So, let me just draw that in so that, oh, we got a little bit of the top banana overlapping the bottom banana a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. Okay, and we've got this nice brown bruising that we can just draw in like this with some vertical lines coming out from where the outer banana has bumped up against our lower banana. So I'm just gonna very slowly and very lightly block in that shadow and then a little bit more tapers down this way. And try to get the angle of your lines right. I made them a little too diagonal. Okay, and then really darken it up right next to the overlapping banana. Because that'll really give it some three-dimensional value. Now we've got two little ends that kind of taper down a little bit. Yeah. There's kind of a light spot in here, surrounded by dark spots. Um, and a little bit comes down from the initial bruise. Like that. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it's really starting to look three-dimensional. 
Okay, now I'm gonna zoom out for a bit. And we're gonna focus on the shadows. So we've got some form shadows, which start near the top and then taper off a little bit. We only really see them about a third of the way down the banana. So I'm gonna start with some vertical lines very lightly right next to each other just going up and down and filling in the shading on that inner side and I'm just doing one tone and try not to turn your lines as you go down the curve of the banana keep them straight up and down and that'll be harder when you get to the area where um, the the shadow tapers off a bit so I'm just um, decreasing my pressure as I go further down the banana and it, it disappears about halfway down so I can go in up at the top and tilt my lines back the other way a little bit like towards the the left so that they overlap a bit um, near the bottom of my outline and that'll give it an even more three-dimensional value and I'm gonna stop about a third of the way down the banana so that's really darkened it up a bit Okay, and we've also got some shadow down here. It goes all the way up the, the banana, but it tapers off as we go up. So I'm going to add that form shadow and I'm going to use um, kind of slanted diagonal lines for this one or you could slant, yeah, actually I'm gonna slant my lines this way. I don't know why, it's kind of just a gut feeling. Um, maybe they, they should kind of, you could think of it as like my, my light source is up here. That's where my lamp is. And so I'm trying to line up my shading lines with where the rays of light are coming from. So that, that's why it lines up with the angle I'm holding my pencil at right now. I'll, I'll zoom in so I can show you this a little bit better. Okay, so we've got the shadow going up the side. So I'm gonna try and add that in with some diagonal lines leaning off to the left. I'm just trying to put the lines as close to each other as possible and use a very gentle touch. So I'm only shading. I'm not going all the way up to the middle of the banana. If you want to imagine a line in the middle, I'm only doing the outer third. And you can turn your lines this time. I don't know why it's hard to describe like why you can turn your lines with the shape sometimes and why you shouldn't other times I guess it's just the the angle of the shape the way the light falls across the object so as you can see when I started my lines were tilted this way and then as I'm going up the curve of the banana, it's like a clock and they're starting to tilt, become more horizontal. <laughs> I, couldn't, I wish I could explain why that is. If anyone has any input, please put it in the comments. I don't, that was something I never really um, mastered in art school. Okay, and then it kind of tapers off as you go up 
the side of the banana. Kind of fades away so you can make your lines a little farther apart and shorter as you go up the side. And I like to blend with my finger a little bit so that the edge of my lines don't look so choppy. And then you can just bring that all the way up the side of the banana to where we haven't drawn yet. Because there isn't that much up there. Not a lot of shadow up there. And be sure to blend all the way down into the rest of your shading too or it's, it's not going to look great. <laughs> and I'm going to blend with my finger on this side too. Kind of bring it all together. Yeah. Okay, so um, since we're focusing on the inner banana, might as well do the cast shadow now. We've got some cast shadow from the stem. So I've got some sketch lines here that I need to erase. from before I put my detail in on the stem. Okay. And I'm just going to try and outline this cast shadow. So let's see, we've cast shadow starts at uh, just before the light area of the torn neck of the stem comes out. Let's zoom in, shall we? We can actually see what we're doing. Okay. And I can't really describe this shape to you, but it's like a misshapen hor horizontal line, like a wavy horizontal line with a little hook in it, a little fish hook right there. And, uh, I don't know, I should have put that down a little further. Mm, I'm, I'm just going to start from here because I'm struggling up here. So I'll just start from the other end, bring you out from the fruit of the banana. A very thin outline. It bumps out a little bit below where the stem bumps out. And we go in, we got a couple little bumps here. There, okay? And then I'm just going to shade that in with um, some slanted lines slanting towards the left again. using a very light hand. There we go. You just don't want to make it as dark as your banana shading. You can go in and darken up the shading on your form shadow. It'll typically be a lot darker than your cast shadow. <laughs> um, especially since this is not actual shadow. This is like pigment of the bananas bruising, so. Yeah. And as you can see, we have a bit of chiroscuro here. So it's kind of, the shadow is light, almost as if the banana is glowing. Isn't light interesting? It's a particle and it's a wave. What the hell is it? They don't know. They say they know, they don't know. <laughs> Science is lying to me. <laughs> no, I don't know. How weird is that? That's the only thing though. That's like the particle and the wave. I don't know. Somebody explain that to me. I'm not a scientist. I'm just an artist. 
What do I know? Oh, and we've got a tiny bit of cast shadow on the inside of our um, banana as well. So I'm going to darken up my outline here. And then I'm going to do just a tiny bit of shading. There's like, well, this section here doesn't have it. And then as soon as it gets a little more curved in, it's got a little bit of cast shadow. So I'll put that there. I'm just going to do, it's so small. I don't think it really matters what angle your lines are tilted at. I think I'll just mostly follow the line of the outline of the banana. Yeah, there we go. Starting to look a little more three-dimensional, eh? Okay, let's zoom out, see what we've done. Okay, let's do the cast shadow on the bottom of the banana. So let's bring, start with our little nipple here on the bottom. There you get kind of curved. It's not as sharp and weird as the, uh, well, I actually made it a little too sharp. It's a little more curved in real life. So I'll take away some of this shading. Yeah, it's more like this. That's a little bit better. Uh huh. Okay. And then we bring in the nipple a little bit and then it bumps out again. And we follow the line, the outline of the banana once again, very lightly, all the way up to the other banana. Okay. And I will use my tilted lines again. I'm going to tilt them a little bit more this time so that this surface looks a little flatter. Like in my experience, the more horizontal your lines are, the more it looks like this. And the more hor hor uh, vertical your lines are, the more it looks like this. So the, the flatter a surface looks, I don't know. Ugh. I'm not explaining it very well. I hope you guys get it. Okay, so now is when my um, lead is getting very dull. I'm gonna keep using it until I get to the end of the shadow because if I stopped, you don't want to sharpen your pencil in the middle of shading a shadow because I'll come in with a much pointier tip and then the rest of the shadow will be much darker and there will be a line where I stopped to sharpen so it'll look really weird. So I'm just gonna finish um, putting in the shadow. And then I'll sharpen my pencil. So all the way up. Let me see, does that get darker? Yeah, it gets darker when we get between the two bananas. So I'll just press a little harder and go back over my lines a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, and now I'm going to sharpen my pencil. That's good. And now I'm going to darken up the shadow. In between the banana. 
See how it gets so much darker in between there? So I'm gonna go in with the same angle of lines. And now that I have a pointier tip, it's just gonna fill in all those little white spots. Okay. Nice. All right. Um, if you want to, you can blend this with your finger so you can get rid of some of the lines. Yeah, that's nice. And then we'll do the cast shadow. Well, let's do the form shadow first. Yeah on our um, outer banana. So we've mostly just got shading on this inner side and then a little bit on the outside, just like the other banana. So I'm gonna start with some vertical lines in the top here and fill this side in. I really like making these videos for you guys. I love seeing um, one person I know in real life <laughs> does my videos and then they text the, their drawing to me and I love that so much. It, it's like very motivating to me. Like I'm filming this video very late. Um, it's Sunday <laughs> and I normally film on Wednesday and then I have like the whole, you know, the whole rest of the week and the weekend to make sure like all my links are in the description and everything looks good and I can refilm if I have to. I haven't had to yet, but I know that there will come a day when I need to. So I don't like cutting things close like this. But I just wasn't feeling well like all week, you know, I'm exhausted from the snow here. I have to shovel snow twice a day at least. Um, not the last couple days because it hasn't snowed the last couple days, but we got like um, more than a foot of snow. Uh, okay, so the shadow starts to taper off here, so I'm just going to go in with a, an even lighter touch. Ugh. See what I said, meant about the the line? It's easy. It's much easier to get that line. I'm, I'm going to start over from the beginning and put in another layer of shading to darken this up so that I can really taper it off. I started off way too light. So I'm just tilting my second layer of lines in a little bit more so that they overlap. And I'm also gonna darken up my outline a bit because I can't really tell the difference between the form shadow and the cast shadow. I'll probably darken up this uh, cast shadow quite a bit. Yeah, it's very dark, so I can make it just like almost completely black and that would be fine. And just um, let it fade out a little bit as I get towards the uh, the center of the negative space. Yeah, I like that, nice and dark. But the edge isn't super sharp. It's got, I'm gonna add a little bit of fuzz to the edge of that. Cause it is a little bit of a gradient. It's not totally, yeah. And I could use a little bit more fuzz on that line. I'm just kind of doing little circles that are so light I can just kind of smudge them out with my finger like that. Yeah, I added a little more shadow than I had to, but that's okay. Okay, <laughs> let's finish. And I broke my own rule. I just taught you this rule. And now my lid is different. It's gonna look a little different. I shouldn't have stopped right in the middle of that shadow. My ADD is showing. Okay. 
Now I'm, I'm just putting my lines a little further apart. Yeah, and I'm going to blend it out with my finger. I like to start from where it's like the lightest and then bring it in towards the darkest area when I'm finger blending. But a lot of people, if you end up with a lot of uh, lead on your finger, then you could end up putting like a fingerprint in your light area. So be careful. Okay, that turned out pretty good. Um, I feel like there's something just not quite right about that. Um, I think it'll look better once I put in this bruise. But let's get the shadows done first. So, let's do the cast shadow on the outside of the outer banana. We'll start with the nipple. Comes out a little bit like that, curves. And follow the line of the banana, but it doesn't, you don't follow the line of the banana totally all the way up. It stops about right here. So bring it about halfway up the banana. To mm, about here. What do I think? Yeah, I'm gonna shade it in real quick and see if that looks right. What was I saying? Oh yeah, the snow here has been crazy, but luckily it's like powdery snow. It's the worst when it snows and then it warms up and melts because then it all frozes into like a solid block of ice and then you're driving on ice and you can't shovel it because it's solid ice. <laughs> um, and then if I want to get it off my porch, I got to take like a metal shovel and break it up. How's that look? Well, it needs to be a little bit fatter. I didn't bring the bottom line out enough. I should have made this nipple a little bit more fatter on this end. Yeah, that'll be better. And if you want, I'm going to erase this vertical line or else the shadow is not going to blend together. And if you're a beginner, you probably just want to erase like most of the shadow because if you try to do another shadow right next to it, it'll look funny. There'll be like a line. There'll be a seam basically. Okay. So, and that's still not quite right. I think you got to bring it out just even a little bit farther like that. Yeah. I think so. Okay, let me shade this in again and see if see how it's going. So anyway, long story short, I've just been exhausted from shoveling snow because winter has just begun and I'm not used to it yet. So I've just been really tired. I also had to change my diet again. For those of you that don't know me, I'm on like a really stupid diet. I'm not going to go into it. It's for health reasons. Um, but I have to change it all the time. I become like intolerant to things and I've just had problems with my gut for a long time. So I have to change my diet a lot and some food that I've been eating will start making me sick out of nowhere. And so basically right now, uh, I can't eat any carbs without getting like a headache or just feeling really tired. Except for potatoes. Potatoes seem to be fine. Okay. Yay. Our cast shadow finally looks all right. 
I'm gonna blend it with my finger. There we go. And let's add some details, huh? Let's do let's do the bruise on the line down here. Add that. Then there's another kind of bruise near the where the shadow starts. Then we've got a little spot here in between the bruises. We got a little line of dots, a little crescent of dots. Here. Yeah, that's something like that. And we can basically just do like some stippling for these other freckles. I'm not even kind of like trying to make them exactly like the freckles that I see on the banana because screw that. I'm just kind of going for the gist of it. Okay, and then I'm going to put in these freckles. Okay, I got some. We start with the biggest ones first. We got a, a little crescent. One, two, three, four. Four right here in the center of the banana. They're like lining up. They're just below the negative space here. So we'll start there. Put in my my four dots. One, two, three, four. Yeah. And then we've got three little ones here. One, two, three. Then we got a big one right next to those. Big one. Then we got like two right on top of each other above that. Off to the diagonal. But, and then we got uh, a little dick shaped one. One, two, three, four. Okay, so put in the balls and the shaft. <laughs> This is why I do this on YouTube and not in an actual school. <laughs> I've never put on my videos that these are made for kids. But honestly, dicks and balls are like, animals have them too. We all have them. Whatever. Just don't be immature, okay? Okay, so... Oh, we got a little more bruising up here, whatever. Some, just some random bruising. Look at that! Look at that one! Okay, we could add some more freckles down here. Got a funny little line here. We got some scratches. We've got a tail coming off this, uh, well, it's kind of a line running through the middle of our four dot crescent. And it's got a little comet tail coming off of it. And we've got a big old scratch right here. Let's do that. Okay, and then we've got a nice little sort of curved scratch coming down the side. That really gives it some more three-dimensional value. I'll just add some more freckles in. Just dab, dab, dab. Just dab, dab, dab. Okay, and we got some bruising down here. Shall we? Let's um. Let's bring out the bruise a little bit more. Bring it up the side. Yeah, that looks great. Now I've changed the angle so that you can see this line, but it's up to you if you want to draw that line in or not. I'm not going to because it basically disappears. All I've got is this funny little freckle bruise here. And um, I'm just going to darken up the outline 
because that's all it really looks like. So very, so it's like you can just kind of thicken up your outline over here. And bring out the bruising a little bit. And we've got a really dark outline up here. Yeah. I'm gonna, okay, let's add some detail on the uh, outer banana. We've got a nice big bruise coming up um, in the middle, really, of this between the seam line and the rest. So I'll just sketch that in. We've got a little kind of like nick coming across there. We've got some bruising on the seam. Oh, blah, blah. And we got this nice little uh, nick here. Darken that up real nice. And um, let me see, we've got some light bruising leading up to, I'm gonna smudge that a bit. Leading up to this blob and let's do the big bruise. So it'll help us block in everything else. I'm just kind of doing loop-de-loops. And then I'll, I'll use some like diagonal lines to do the top of the bruise. We got three little, three little tails coming off the bruise. Okay. And then really bulge out the bottom. And I've got a scratch underneath that. We got some more scratches over here. Scratch, scratch. Okay. And let, let's darken up this little like freckle bruise thing. It's super dark. Okay. And we haven't done the form shadow on the outside of the banana. Silly me. I'm just going to use some very light diagonal lines. And, you know, it's not going to look 3D if we leave this out. Oh, I think I'm allergic to my makeup. I keep sniffling. I get a runny nose every time I do it. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm not going to get you sick through the screen. Yeah, let me zoom out. So it goes, the shading goes all the way up the banana to about here. And there's like a nice dark outline up at the top where there's some bruising on the seam. So I'll darken that up. We got some freckles, sort of in like a circle up here. Probably where another banana was bruising it. Okay, so I wanna stop stopping in the middle of a shadow, Liz. Oh my gosh. Breaking the rules, breaking the law, breaking it law. Oh, we're already an hour and 19 minutes in. I, we got to finish this up. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to blend that with my finger. Okay, what else does this banana have? It's got a little bit of freckles and bruising along the seam. So I'll, I'm just going to darken up the edge of the seam a little bit. And yeah, we've got a lot more of this weird line bruise here. So I'll darken that up and bring that up a little further. kind of disappears into the inner outline. And 
Yeah. Um, what am I leaving out? Oh, there's some bruising up here between the the two bruise lines. You can do that. Yeah. And we got like a little dot up here. Uh, actually it was up a little higher, but whatever. <laughs> And we got some bigger freckles in this little bruise area. I'll zoom in and show you. See, I got all these little funny little nicks. There we go. That looks a little better. And then we got a few freckles around this one. And yeah, let's bring up the bruise even further. It goes up pretty far. And give it some more body. Body. I need some more bruises. More bruises. Okay. Someone's going to use that out of context to cancel me. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, um, well, you can't really see that from the top, can you? Okay, we got some bruising along our, uh, outline here. So just darken up the outline a bit, bring it in a little. Yep. All right, and I think that's about it. Yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh, look how good we did. It's beautiful. Now obviously you could go in and work on your shadows a little bit more, darken up the areas that need to be darkened up, add, you know, do add some more of the freckles and the bruises, but I am super proud. Yeah, I could add some shading down here around the, the nipple and a little more up here too. Just make the nipple end a little more curved looking. Yeah, look at that. I'd probably darken up this area up the top too. Yeah, so all that's left at this point is to go in and nitpick, really. I guess I could add some texture to this light area. Yeah. A little more texture. A little more darkness on the seam. Beautiful. Good job, guys. Thanks for joining me for another one. Don't forget to visit my website where you can read my short graphic novels. Go to webtoon.com where you can read my comic, Atheist Afterlife. Chapter 6 is almost done, but I always say that with watercolors. You know, like, it's almost done when it's like half done. So, But I'm very close to the digital editing phase. Um, you can email me your drawings. You can tag me on Instagram, Liz the Lazy Cat. You can email me at lazycatcomics at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to catch my next video. I'll see you guys on Monday.